Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. Well, it's another, another deep reading, Sagittarius. So in your last reading, we talked about how you could become a gathering place that wherever you sort of settled, made your home, whether it was a, a business or your, your house or, or even just yourself in some way, that you could be a gathering place where people would come. And whether that is of interest to you or, or something else, something else that you want to do. I think you've gotten a little stuck. So these two cards here together. So this nine of wands, which is actually a Sagittarius card, is my great host card. Um, so uh, source your fellowship um, events and synchronicities and all those things that are just sort of waiting to happen or ready, right? They're ready. But what they perceive is this silence that you have not put out the signal for them to go. Now this union, this bringing together of things, and there's so many things about this card, so many things that we think of as as dichotomous or opposite or incompatible that can come together. Different ways of doing things, different ways of thinking, action versus receptivity, um, introversion and extroversion, all, all these ways, things to be integrated with each other. And I think that maybe the issue for you, Sagittarius, with this Seven of Cups choices underneath, you know, you are, um, you like things singular. Your, uh, your Axis sibling, Gemini, likes things multiple. Gemini just loves, right, all, to, to have it all, to see all the things. But you really like, a, right, the singularity, the singular focus, the one target for your arrow. And with this hermit card and her lantern, she always looks, you know, like she's, seeking something in the darkness. She's gone out in the darkness with her lantern to find it, as opposed to following the lantern in this particular card. And then with this five of wands and competition, right, this sense that you, you, right, you want the one thing, the one way, Uh, the one spiritual, the one spiritual way. That these, these various things feel like they're competing to you. Rather than being um, collaborative. 
but that it is possible for multiple things to come together in harmony. When you have a choir or a chorus, there are many different voices. Everything from bass to soprano. But they come together in harmony. It is possible for these apparently opposing forces to be brought together. And I think that it's mostly in your own head that you feel like you have to, right, that you have to find the way, the we, the way to be. Um, you know, maybe you're seeking complete equanimity. Um, you know, seeking to be unfuckable, as they say. Um, right, to find the one way that will just make it all clear and smooth. Right, seeking this, this direction. And maybe you are even looking for, with the higher event, with somebody to follow. Looking for a spiritual mentor or leader or even a guru. To find. But right below this hierophant, we have the Ace of Wands, the Knight or the Prince of Swords and the Prince of Cups. So this is individualist energy. This is free energy. The free mind, the free heart, and actually right below that is the fool. So what's wanted here is some greater flexibility. The Empress coming out, she is often thought of as a combination of all four queens. I mean, she is very earthy, she's Venus, but there, the other queens are present. Um, she has the clarity and imagination and discernment of the Queen of Swords. She has the compassion and um, intuition and emotional intelligence of the Queen of Cups. And she has the inspiration and passion of the Queen of Wands, as well as all the earthy qualities of the Queen of Pentacles. There is a way for energies to come together. Right, this happiness card, the Nine of Cups. The ability to, um, to accept that, you know, there's all different sides of you, that there may be um, circumstances when you behave in this way and circumstances when you behave in another that your preferences, which right, could also be called boundaries, are not static, not etched in stone, that they may change and shift. And that, that that's fine, right? That you can change your preferences and that maybe they change depending on, you know, who you're with.
and that you can right that you can hold multiple emotional possibilities right that you can love humanity and really dislike that person over there And then again, we have both the three and the four of wands coming out. So the ability to add, not just people, but ideas. That, right, you have that ace of wands down there below the hierophant, but, you know, and, and maybe it's your, right, it's kind of your core, your core set of values, your core inspiration, but you can pick up other ones as you go. You can pick up other ones and, and make them into a different configuration. Right, I mean, going from this three to this four presents us with the wheel. which was a major invention, changed things radically for humans when the wheel was created. So this, this ability to create synergy internally to have some beliefs maybe that contradict each other sometimes to have a really nuanced view so you know that under these circumstances you would do X and under those circumstances you might do Y or Z. Right, the whole rainbow of possibilities is available. Now this may bring up anxiety Below this, we have this taming the wind and then this middle world card, which, you know, often to me looks like a snow globe. A kind of um, hermetically sealed existence where, you know, everything is predictable and everything is known and you know, even Sagittarius, as you go on an adventure that you kind of know, right? That you have the sense of knowing that everything, um, you know, even though you might encounter new things that somehow it won't be challenging to you around, and, you know, sort of in the mental sphere that your beliefs, right, will remain as static as this hermetically sealed bubble. And there's something, there's something about this idea of changing beliefs, possibly, that That there's something, I don't know, maybe you've met somebody recently who has some very different beliefs from yours and you find yourself agreeing with some of them, right? We have this seer and here he's not coming through as, you know, sort of all knowing or the seer, he's coming through actually as a little tense. <laughs> He's gripping his wooden, um, I'm not quite sure, his staff, I think, right? He's gripping his staff. Um, there's a sense of, you know, that he's kind of afraid to open his eyes to see because what's coming towards him is this thunder. So 
there's this sense here, Sagittarius, that, you know, you had your beliefs lined up, your, you know, your values, what you, you thought was absolutely true. And you're having some anxiety that these are being challenged. And maybe through this gathering place, perhaps it's actually sort of started, even if it hasn't reached its full flower. And you're encountering a whole different set of beliefs and you, you don't quite know what to, to do with it. It's a lot. It feels overwhelming. And challenging to you. And so it's right, it's triggering. Right, it's triggering the possibility that you might, you know, maybe you change your beliefs about something, or maybe it's showed you something about yourself that you don't particularly like and that you want to bury. Um, but it's, there is this, this shutting down energy here, right? In this, right? You've kind of gone silent. <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting. I'm seeing now that there is, right, that this, that there is um, a relationships to the last couple of readings This idea of wanting something, right? Seeking, perhaps. Um, maybe really feeling with this Knight of Cups, or Prince of Cups, rather, um, and the sense of union. That there's something that your heart is longing for. But you've got these fears Um, that it will be challenging, that it will be confusing. Um, that you won't know how to deal with it. Um, that it's showing you some aspect of yourself that you don't like and that you, you would prefer wasn't there. So here with this relic card, right? You've turned away from the vulture, <laughs> right? Because these are kind of, right? This is sort of water territory a little bit. Scorpio territory. as well as Gemini territory to some extent. And there's a, there's a discomfort there. Sagittarius and Scorpio live next to each other in the, in the zodiac wheel. And there can be discomfort in that, in, in, in the energies of neighbors on the wheel. And here you're, you're looking away from this vulture and towards this beyond impediments, right? It would be so lovely just to, to never encounter another impediment, to find the way so that you could always be sort of soaring over things. But the vulture, actually wants to guide you home. Wants to guide you towards this, right, this triad of kinship. 
that this messiness, you know, occasionally it's competition. It's certainly always many different choices. The diversity of beliefs and possibilities and viewpoints and cultures. that all of these things are beautiful, right? That you can be in kinship to all of this diversity. That you have, you will always have your sort of stable core, you know, of who you are, that, that ace of wands. like a spine within you. But that it's possible to pick up other wands, examine them, check them out, keep some, let some go. That you can, and that you can encounter people who are carrying completely different wands without fear or anxiety. That you know, somehow they're going to change you or infect you. You know, that, that, you know, here it feels like, right, you have a hand over your mouth that, you know, that you're going to taste poison. But that isn't how it works. And so we have the chariot coming out here. You know, the moon, which is mystery. Cancer, who is another water sign. Who, you know, the crab lives in the intertidal zone. There as the waves just constantly come in and out. The tide comes in and out. There's always new messages changing emotions, right? That watery stuff, which I think, you know, maybe you're simply not that comfortable with because it can get messy and it can get deep and mired and murky. And so this moon, right here you are, staring at your cups, kind of, um, you know, perhaps not wanting to participate, perhaps hiding out. And the moon is sending you this blood red energy, this, this red fabric for your red dress. Actually, now that I think of it, when I say that, at the bottom of the deck, we have this invocation, the red dress complete. This dance, this willingness, and actually then the lovers. The hieros gamos, the holy sacred marriage, often of opposites the ability to hold opposing ideas, to live with paradox, to live with deep nuance, for things to be, you know, for this particular circumstance to be different from that one. So, Sagittarius. Advice the world. <laughs> Embrace the world. Embrace the all. Right, these are all the fixed signs Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. All those um, 
earthy and fixed and you know in many ways wary right that the stuff that sometimes causes trouble And you're looking here in the advice towards temperance. You are card, Sagittarius, <laughs> in the deck. And here, you know, with water flowing back and forth, um, standing here with one foot in the water and one foot on the ground. Right, and fire at your chest and air behind you, right? All the elements are here in the temperance card, as they all are in the world. So the ability to combine, to allow things to be combined, to allow diversity within your own self. You know, now in the, in the current world, right, there's things that one might see online that, that you know, people, and the sense that if they say one thing that you disagree with, that you should eliminate them, right? That's an example of this, right? Of this fear of the other, this fear of ideas that is in many ways a fear of the self because we don't always feel the same way about things. And we have different ideas about what should be done in different circumstances. So, here, if you've been feeling like this, <laughs> defensive, beating back the other wands, Interestingly, what came out, this card was the one that I chose out of the deck, but there was a second card that was stuck to it. So this, right, walking away, and the card that was stuck to it was the Ace of Cups underneath. So not so much leaving this, but moving toward, you know, what is it that your heart calls you to? You know, is it really mixing with all different kinds of people? Getting, you know, reading all different kinds of books, having different ideas, having different opinions on different subjects. The ability to be nuanced in your thinking. You know, to meet a person and see all their different sides. You know, yeah, they do this thing that you don't like, but then they do this other thing that's really wonderful. And to be able to hold those truths together. All right, so the Empress. who as Venus and as Gaia, right, holds all the diversity, knows that it is in diversity that, that creation flourishes. And then the King of Swords. So clarity, discernment, knowing your own mind, right? You don't have to be dragged hither and thither, believing this one day and then believing something else another day or living in confusion because you don't know what you what is true for you. You absolutely have the ability to know what is true for you. Now, it is possible, of course, that that, you know, 10 years from now, it might change. But that you always know who you are. 
you know, here is this hermit. You know, you're out there looking, but you, right? You don't need to look. You are here. You are yourself. That will never change. You can allow all these others, all these wands, all these cups to come into your experience. And you will be well. Right? There is a lot of fire energy here. There's um, Leo energy here with this five of wands. And then Aries energy with this three and four. Um, you know, and even the seven here, which is also uh, Leo energy. So I hope this was, I hope this was clear and not too, um, I don't know, too preachy. Um, you know, I think that, that the energy here just wants, right, wants you to be at ease, to not feel um, sort of clenched, to not be in this seven of wands energy because maybe you feel like you have to keep this narrow course. You know, to do all the practices exactly. To maintain, you know, a spiritual or mental purity. Right, with this snow, right, the sense that, you know, it's just sheer white. And here too, right, in your white dress, rather than your red one. Allow the mess. Allow the twists and turns of the river. You have the inner stability and inner clarity to retain your balance, your ease, Sagittarius. I wish you all the very, very best, Sagittarius, and I'll see you next time. So long.